stopped at times. You know what? Bruce Willis is eating cereal for 10 minutes in a damn movie. I could agree with that. The movie's the movie's not great. I mean, I just thought I'm basing both movies on the end. You know? Let me ask you this: Are you a big comic book fan, or were you back not, in the day? No, not really. But I mean, I enjoy them. Oh, yeah. But I'm not like a comic really? book buff. You probably like it then. Okay, now tell me what happened. Do you, do you know the premise? Yeah, he survives a train wreck. I get I'll explain the story to you on the way okay. home. I, I have to explain the movie. Okay. Can yeah. I just throw in the fact that I thought he was Jesus Christ, and I got all excited when he survived that train wreck, and I <laughs> thought it was going to be like apocalyptic and stuff like that? It's nothing like that. I'll, I'll explain. Okay, so Should have been. There's more to it than just him surviving the train. The coolest wreck. part of yes. the whole movie is Samuel L. Jackson's coat. <laughs> jacket. What about that hair? It's a leather jacket, but it, it's purple lining. Are right, you guys ready to go? You done with your movie reviews? So I don't know. I don't know who on. booked the finished it. All right, in a minute. I don't know I'm who booked the finished it. I'm trying to find out what happened at the end of the movie. I don't here. give a crap about what happened to the movie. That well, it's a double disc, horrible. Jim. Double DVD well, disc. I'm never gonna write. I don't have a DVD player. And the ah. hair was the Frederick Douglass hair from the black guy. All right. Thanks to that uh, irrelevant point. But right, you guys doing we need a Civil War reference. Well, so I know. I don't know. When it's the same thing we do all the time. I'm just going to sit here. We're going to talk. We're going to have some fun. Can we get the shop back and get the half no, inch of water off the front? Or say. Hurricane Juan Carlos. Just because you were electrocuted last time you had this big storm, don't be gun shy now. Give me some creative ideas. You want to you know, sit there, four people talking. I like it, but what else would you come up with? Well, I was planning on tying my shoe in a third segment. I mean, if you want to get a close up <laughs> on the knee right there. Well, you don't wear sandals this week? No, huh? It's too. It was raining. I knew it was going to rain. Gosh. I don't want my feet to smell. What, the new season's coming up in three weeks. Give me something. Mm. So. Did, you, did you get the memo? Uh, no. I've been the memos for the last two weeks, man. Well, you've no. been here for So the we last have two three weeks, weeks to come up with something. Well, you got, I was thinking more like three seconds to come up with something. <laughs> you know, we got the idea of putting Tom in the cage, hanging him up on the lights, and then going to him every once in a while. I don't want this gratuitous nudity on my account, <laughs> okay? He's dancing. I'm not working with that. He's not dancing in the cage. I don't think anybody will be here. I mean, <laughs> granted, the fact that I am a great dancer, I don't think anybody anyway. will be here. Then we're just moving on to this week's show. So I don't know who booked the finished AI. It was just 20 ridiculous. minutes of extras. It was ridiculous. I hope you don't see that. Well, no, the well, coolest part about Haley Joe Osmond, or whatever the hell his name is, is after he says his lines, he like grits his teeth. He goes, <laughs> I think that's funny. That's All right, here's your countdown. Five, four. Three, two, one. Hello, kids. Welcome back to Pro Wrestling Review. This is Tom, your not usual host for the week because Brian and Jim, or actually, I'm sorry, Brian and Rennie are discussing the finer points of the movie AI, which is, I think is amazing because Rennie hasn't even seen the movie yet. But you were in it, though. Well, yeah, <laughs> but just for a little bit. Hey, a little you? bit counts. That was you? So how, far, how much of Manhattan was underwater in the movie? I, I can't say. Yeah. I, I, I ever a bad thing when New York City's do under your intro. Well, come on, host. Do your intro. Who's <laughs> <laughs> starting? <laughs> Hello. Flip a coin. <laughs> and welcome back to a Family Feud. Uh, this is Pro Wrestling Review, quite obviously, in case you didn't recognize the backdrop or any of us. I'm Brian Kraz for the Daily News. And I'm Rene Dutor from the Tribune Review. Enjoy it. Even if we're doing this differently, why don't you guys introduce yourselves? I got to spoon feed this. Well, I'm Jim DeBruzzo, and I missed weeks ago. I'm Jim Rome of ESPN Radio. <laughs> I'm happy to be here this week, guys, <laughs> and uh, I hope you got some good questions for me. Well, naturally, I'm Tom Combetti. I wish I was Jim Rome. Uh, Only in a perfect do, world. Tom. I we know. I just like his hair. And the fact that, uh, was it Jim Everett that almost uh, crucified him on the air once? <laughs> yeah, for the guy who rips pro wrestling every week. The guy, you know, did the first work shoot and, you know, the history of televised sports, uh, whatever. Now, Red Fox did that on Sanford and Son <laughs> many moons ago. But anyway, enough obligatory references to nothing. Yes. Well, we're going to talk about a variety of subjects tonight, uh, not the least of which the ECW invasion of the WWF. I think we'll probably get to that in maybe you know, the last two minutes of the show. It wasn't that big. <laughs> so it depends on who you talk to. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I was going to say, if you read the internet, apparently disaster struck and a missile hit Phillips Arena and wrestling's dead. And well, just think, Jim, if that missile hit that arena, then there's no promotions left because they were all <laughs> three there at the same time. That's true. Think about that. Vern Gagne wasn't there, and the AWA wasn't there. Well, Vern was Randy Savage, you know, Spider-Man promotions that are coming up, or whatever the hell he's God. doing. Well, you know, before we get into the ECW thing, we'll let people sit around and wait till they hear our opinion on it. Uh, Buff Bagwell, moment of silence, he's gone. Well, he's not dead, but, you know, you know his career. I, I look at it this way. I recently fired an employee in my workplace, and I, I would view it the same way. I didn't even get a chance to say, Jim. na 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 hey, hey, goodbye, <laughs> for either situation. How did you fire somebody? I'm mean. I'm a prick, apparently. <laughs> mean. Jerk. 
Yeah, but Buff Bagwell, for those of you who haven't heard or didn't hear the loud celebrations all over the United States of America, Buff Bagwell was released from his contract Monday evening in Atlanta, well, I'm Georgia. Done. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, the, the wrestling business is truly dead <laughs> at this point. <laughs> uh, I don't know. You know, I tried to call the WWF to let us do the firing, but uh, <laughs> you know, we didn't get a call back. So well, there's a shock. Well, in the days up to his firing, as rumor has it, I, apparently his mother Judy Bagwell kept phoning the WWF on a semi-regular basis. I'm th this is actually truthful here. On a semi-regular basis, daily, and saying that well, her so her son's too injured to wrestle, or his travel arrangements have been screwed up, so he can't fly in, and he deserves better than that. Hey, Judy, you're a former tag champion. Let's leave it at that, okay? You fell coming down to the ring one time and split your head open. I just want to remember you for that, not for this. Are you sure Judy <laughs> wasn't calling the WWF looking for work, being seeing as how she was a former tag team champion? Anybody that can wear a Felix the Cat shirt, three <laughs> sizes oh too long, God. into the ring has my respect. Hey, there is an open spot left on that WCW ECW team. Judy, we need you. Do you notice how Bagwell, two Mondays ago on Raw, it seemed like all his hair fell out of his head at the same time? <laughs> in addition to the fact that he sandbagged the whole match and didn't know what to do when in, in the ring with Booker he's T. He's got the little Iron Sheik belly now, too. <laughs> yeah, yeah, Bagwell's pregnant. He's the only guy with like a you know 45-inch waist, but he has a six-pack, so you, know, you, you can come up with your own conclusions on that. But, uh, but truly, a great talent has been lost in, in Buff Bagwell, I well, would say. Another incident that led up to this as we head out of the segment, apparently the act like beat the hell out of him on SmackDown. Off screen, unfortunately. That's a shame. I'm really surprised. It, it's a shame it should have been, been, been on screen. Yeah. Well, yeah. It, it, it's a shame, shame they had to waste the act like time to do this. They could have sent Taka and, well, me, and yeah. we could have done the same job. If there was ever a time to bring back GTV, this would have been it. It would have been great Monday night if they would have just done a GTV of Bagwell just getting a snot kicked <laughs> out of him. The only, the only catch is, like, if GTV is a scripted segment, the battle yeah, or the beating should have been real. But uh, What kind of was, from what uh, reports indicate, is he tried to sort of beg his way off, saying his neck hurt, and, you know, you just don't say that to Brooke and Bradshaw, because <laughs> they kill you. Well, well, you know, you got to get paid to do something right. They wrestle, you know, on a part-time basis and beat the hell out of people on a full-time basis, so, you know. And they're now the new tag team champions. See that? We're never going to see a Buff Bagwell Titan Tron figure, though. Damn. That is the one casualty in this whole situation. Really so he can step up on that Titan Tron and say, I'm buff, I'm the stuff, and my mom can't get enough. <laughs> I, just, I wanted to hear that one time on the Titan Tron. Wow. Well, sir, I think we've done enough yeah. damage to buff that. Well, he does it to himself. But, you know. <laughs> but uh, we're going to come back, and we're going to talk a little bit more about wrestling-type items. So please stay with us. I personally, this whole ECW thing was thought of during the course of the week. And we just go into the ECW thing first. Anybody? I don't know what you said. <laughs> see, I don't see how we can talk about what happened last week without talking about what happened this week first, because it it changes everything that happened last week. Because mm -hmm. it's all different now. Because everything that happened last week has all kind of evolved into this big thing. Oh yeah, I guess, I guess that's true. It was going go that direction. We should probably, if we're going to show a clip, we should probably do that. I would think. Yeah. What do you want to show? I'd probably just <coughs> the uh, spot on Raw when the, the, the guys are the guys. Yeah. Okay. I saw Cooter, the new generation, ECW, our big boys kick ass, XPW, we kill our wrestlers and don't care. Our wrestlers are like uh, <coughs> crash It's test funny because I see, I see Rob Black on the on top promos. He's like, well, you don't like it. You can go back to Jersey All Pro and earn 50 to to $100. At least you'll be wrestling, though. Yeah. Well, At least you won't be here dead. Just die. <sighs> yeah, so. Are you guys ready? Yeah. yeah Here we why go. Not. This is number two. That's it. <laughs> we'll, we'll bust it. Welcome back to Press Review, and as we just saw, the ECW is back, and Jim looks very happy over there. So we we'll have plenty of fodder for rants. This is, this is, I was going to say this is the first time in three stuff. years I've liked an ECW angle. <laughs> oh my goodness! Well, come well, this, this that must mean it worked. Perhaps, but this is well, also this is perhaps. A, no, no, this is also the first time in three years ECW has had an angle. <laughs> Well, th the one thing, I mean, that I saw from this whole angle is the fact that ECW has a roster now. You know, this is <coughs> the best roster they've had since, you know, what, like 1995. It's like so. an all-star roster. <laughs> More or it's less, like, like a reunion roster, yeah. so to speak. But, um, I mean, what did you guys think of, the, you know, obviously one of the bigger angles that uh, Raw has seen. It's comparable well, to the NWO, I would think. <laughs> yeah, you know, it reminded me of two things. It reminded me of the NWO, and it sort of, in a way, reminded me of uh, Russo Bischoff, a little bit. Because that first night, it was like a lot of promise, and you were thinking, boy, if this goes the right direction, it's going to be good. But uh, 
I, I thought it was just a, a, a great angle. I mean, you know, you need to have a surprise factor in on again in the way that it's so easy to find out information that's going to happen on shows the night they happen. Mm -hmm. Not to have any knowledge of this going into it is just great, you know? It's funny you bring up Russo Bischoff, much like when they tried to come back the three different times that they did try to come back. You had a guy in Bischoff who was all about, you know, new <laughs> sets, Master P, the No Limit Soldier, stuff like that. And you had a guy like Vince Russo who was more preoccupied <coughs> with trying to get guys like John Rocker under contract so he could fight him and get his rear end ass whooped. And you have a guy like Paul Heyman who is probably going to be the mouthpiece, I'd go out on a limb to say right here for the ECW guys, and also who books for the WWF. Well, I mean for ECW now, I'm sorry. Heyman knows what to say, he knows what to book, and he knows what not to say. This is going to succeed where the NWO and the Russo Bischoff reg regimen failed. Just to touch on what you mentioned, yeah, this is a lot like the NWO. And before I get to these points, I did, I, like I said, I did enjoy the angle. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Hell! My <laughs> God, my lungs. But uh, the thing is with the NWO, a lot of the appeal it had was, well, who's going to be next to join the NWO? You kind of blew that. I don't want to say you blew it, but you kind of did it all in one night. And the second point is, what I would have liked to have seen how this would have went if ECW was separate. And maybe they would have done a 3 8 feud for a while. I think you'll see it eventually. That's just, that's just my own personal preference. But I did like what they did Monday night. I was going to bring up your first point. You say about how they kind of just blew their whole load and had everybody debut on last, <laughs> last Monday. Let's, let's put the gratuitous stuff aside for now. They blew their whole load. All the ECW guys came out on Raw last Monday. But you have guys like Saturn. You have guys like Malenko. You have guys like Stevie Richards, Jerry Lynn, who are still under WWF contract, so to speak. <coughs> you can have McMahon confront these guys from week to week. Are you guys thinking about jumping to WCW, ECW? Perfect fodder. Yeah, Perfect things for guys who aren't doing anything. You can still do it, but I think it's lessened to some degree. I mean, I think you could have got a lot of interesting TV if, like, the Dudley's joined Monday night, and then they go to Taz in two weeks and say, well, where do you stand? And yeah, Taz, but you, know, you know, on the fence a little bit. I don't think you True. had the same appeal as the NWO, though, because the NWO was never established. So you had an entire roster of wrestlers where you, were, you could honestly sit there and think, well, who is next? We don't know. But with the ECW guys, it's easy to figure out who's next. If the Dudleys don't join Monday night, then it's like, well, the Dudleys got to be next, or Taz has got to be next. I mean, you, you have you know, kind of pigeonholed yourself, and I think if you do Yeah, that that's the same thing, though. Then you got uh, maybe a guy like Taz, as opposed to maybe Taz doesn't join. Maybe Al Snow does down the line. Maybe, I, well, Malenko wasn't really well, to align to ECW. But, yeah, then you have to change it up a little bit. Well, I think one thing, uh, you know, this is probably the most important thing to bring up about this angle was the fact that, you know, it, it was obvious that WCW wasn't ready to compete with the WWF on that same level. They don't have enough guys. So what they did was they took guys from the WWF that were in ECW and recreated ECW and the phenomenon that it was. And so I, you know, I think that's kind of going to give WCW a rub again with the WWF, and it's going to make this feud seem a little bit more important because, quite frankly, besides Booker T and Diamond Dallas Page, obviously Bagwell now being gone, there's really nothing else left. Yeah. I mean, WCW roster is not much of one. And, and if they are going to do a TV show with WCW, obviously this merger leads to that. you got ten guys, I'm sorry, yeah, ten guys just jumping ship, and yeah, you got a full roster now. Well, the other thing, too, I think the thing that made me feel differently, because I've always kind of stood behind you a little bit more with the ECW thing, is that, you know, didn't I, maybe, I don't know, maybe not give enough credit or whatnot, but I think if you go back to the television shows last week at Tacoma, Washington, a place where ECW never promoted, and the fact that WCW got booed out of the house, and there were ECW chants, you know, when, when Tajiri was wrestling and different things like that, I think that shows that perhaps a lot of people like us maybe underestimated ECW a little bit and the appeal that it had nationwide. You know, I don't think you could just do an ECW versus WWF, but I think ECW now is going to add sort of like the coolness factor to WCW that they right. didn't have. Like we said, you know, and we're going to come back and we're going to talk a little bit more about this, but ECW is the wild card in this whole thing. It's going to add a little sizzle to WCW where there wasn't any. But again, we're going to come back and we're going to talk more about this huge angle from this past Monday's Raw, so stay with us. There was like a fight, a real fight in the middle of the match. Then they all went to their corners, then they're, they're tagging in and, you know, yeah. working the match. And then they, they broke down into a shoot fight again, then they went back to working the match. There was a match, it was in Japan, it was like 10 years ago, Stan Hansen against Vader, back when he wore the mask. And Vader punched him in the eye, and his whole face blew up, so he had to take the mask off. Right in the middle of the match, his whole face was like swollen. It wasn't like Vader's WWF days when he took the mask off and got fined. Yeah, yeah. that's because he got winded. Can't breathe. Remember when he said, I'm a big piece of dung, or whatever <laughs> he said? I think he was telling Michael Cole that, though. Coming back? <coughs> oh, sure. Right. You just love it, though. Cole's in the right place at the right time. He's a play by play guy. Bastard. Five, <laughs> four, <laughs> <three>. <laughs> Welcome back to the show. We thank you for joining us. And you really got to hear what we talked about in between segments one time. 
But we're talking about ECW and uh, <laughs> what? We're not talking about anything that bad. Well, it's like we're trafficking or something. One, one day we're gonna we're gonna put a tape. Benico Del Toro. Like, yeah. You know, all the swearing <laughs> you do and all the insulting. But anyway, I'm actually quite maintained. But go ahead. I'm sorry. No, we're talking about the ECW angle. Uh, towards the end, you guys brought up maybe it was a little overbooked with Stephanie McMahon involved. And what do you think about that? You think it's overbooked? Yep. Okay. <laughs> well, it's overbooked. It just we'll be back. <laughs> It's funny how you have three promotions, so to speak, going at it, WCW, WWF, and ECW, but what it boils down to is McMahon versus McMahon versus McMahon again. Yeah, so we've got to bring back AWA all. so Linda can get involved, of course. Yeah. Hey, the Patriot is just waiting for work. Yeah, right. So is DJ Patterson. Hey, Sergeant Slaughter, Tony yeah. Guerrero, you know, you got lots of guys that can come back. Bockwinkle. Well, here's the question. Ron Waters. <laughs> That's right. Wow. Nick Bockwinkle. <laughs> He's 65, <laughs> but he'll fight Frank Robinson to the death. Everybody will hate it. I'm sorry. Well, it's kind of really asked this question, of course. What was Stephanie's involvement? Do you think that's going to decrease Paul Heyman's on air time and perhaps even his mic time? Well, I thought it was kind of ironic that, like, Paul Heyman turned out to be the Todd Gordon of this whole thing, the, the little mole that, uh, you know, goes around and got WWF talent to join ECW, and Stephanie's going to be the leader. But, ah, could he be the mole of the whole entire story that they were talking about? Yeah, that's what I was thinking. Mm, yeah, that's, that's a good point. Name. I didn't think that. He was the. Oh, it's an exclusive. I'm not, like, not like Paul Heyman ironic when he says, oh, Mike Austin is no stranger to a controversial title reign. Okay, Paul. You're still Jim, better. You were, I, I know you were standing up clapping. Uh, I know what he's talking about. Anything that gets Paul Heyman out of a couple <laughs> commentary chairs, okay with me. But no, I mean, I think I think the basis of bringing Stephanie in, and I do agree that it was overbooked, but I think the reason she was brought in was to be, obviously, get a McMahon out there, but, oh, she was the money behind it, you know, and obviously Paul Heyman doesn't have any money, so you needed, you needed to bring in something. That's the half. Well, yeah. Jim. You told me to you, say it. You tell me I'm <laughs> taking cheap shots at ECW. But Ross anyway. was taking several no, last on, The man who ran ECW say, out of business. Jim Ross paled every comment I ever had about ECW. Well, if you weren't on the phone with him during that live <laughs> telecast last <laughs> night feeding him lines yeah, to say about right. Heyman. <laughs> but uh, I'm going to give another reason why Stephanie was out there, and it's kind of obvious. Do you, you give his lines in Southern Drawl like he does? I can't do that. Uh, I'm sorry. It, it, He's here's about to insult someone. Yeah. Here, 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 it, no. Golly gee heck. Reason. You need a chick for this story. I mean, not to sound blunt, but you need a woman out there. To be hey, Francine's uh, not doing anything. Man. You know, it's I, I am ashamed to admit She's this. at a fat camp. <laughs> Jeez. She's an instructor. That's where people don't want to <laughs> lose weight. Yeah. We're supposed well, to say this when it's black and white, not when we're color on the well, air. Right. During the, the first ECW, when uh, Austin and all them joined Dudley's, I'm thinking to myself, okay, this is just going to be an ECW angle. I actually said to myself, well, okay, if you need a woman in this, you got to bring Francine in. We were kidding, Jim. No, I, I'm not. <laughs> I, I mean, I think as far as bumps goes compared to the rest of the WWE roster, I think she's better than most of them. Do I hear thunder again? Well, okay, let's bring up Stephanie in McMahon. In paradise. Next, I'll say something nice about X-Pac in a minute. Oh, God. No. You're going to steal my Stephanie McMahon point, aren't you? I don't think so, but I'm going to. Okay. Go ahead. You. Why don't we just say it simultaneously? <laughs> well, well, the the figure's like obviously like sitting right over there. <laughs> when he does come back and is healthy enough to come back, oh, which side's Hunter going to join his wife's with them? But his brother-in-law is with them. But the man who gave him his job is with them. And Linda McMahon with the AWA. Right. <laughs> I don't even think that's a question. It's, but no, that's an interesting it, point, though. It's a hell of a storyline. When, when you Hunter have got, comes back. Go ahead. No, well, when Hunter comes back, The Rock comes back, you know, different guys like that. Yeah, right. The idea is that, you know, where are they going to go? And where are they going to mm -hmm. side? Is, is Rock going to side with the WWF? You know, is uh, Rock going to side with WCW? Well. It's just interesting because you don't know what's going to happen. And I think that draws on your point about the NWO. Where are they going to go? I think those guys are too big for that to be an issue. Now, before all this ECW th thing happened, when I thought it was just going to be WCW with the storyline, I thought either The Rock or Mick Foley was going to go that with WCW. I, I think it's a dead issue now. I, 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 don't. I don't think it's going to be part of the story at all. I, I think it has to be. I think it may be because, I mean, you figure SummerSlam's coming up, and from all indications, it's going to be The Rock against Steve Austin. And what bigger... What bigger point of a storyline do you have than you know Rock's alliance against Steve Austin's alliance? You know where do they stand? Because obviously they're enemies after WrestleMania. Does he go back inside of the WWF? He made his career. Does he go to WCW? Remember too oh. that The Rock was also suspended mm -hmm. for storyline purposes by Vince McMahon. So that's a logical way to bring him back in, saying you know Vince suspended me, so I came to Shane's WCW, thinking that I wasn't welcome in the WWF anymore, or something to that effect. And then when Hunter's you know well enough to come back. Say he joins up EC with ECW and his wife, then you get a three-way with an ECW Hunter, a WWF Austin, and a WCW Rock. It's a possibility, but uh, my train of thought follows two ways of thinking. Number one, that this story was put together under a week. <laughs> Thanks, Buff. And number two, that 
You have the ECW and WCW guys. I, I would think the logic there is you want to elevate one of those guys. You know, Booker T comes to mind. Dallas Page is already up there. I mean, maybe Lance Storm, Mike Boston. You mean up there in age or? Both. Okay. But maybe, like, great. I guess they're calling him Gregory Helms now. Maybe you, you you push him up to where Xbox and Billy, well, maybe not Billy Kidman is up that high. But I would think you want to elevate those guys into the position. I mean, SummerSlam might be too early for that even, but I think that's the direction you I think you you're pushing it with Gregory Helms. I mean, well, I, I mean, on the cruiserweight level. Yeah, well, because I think you need a personality. And as white bread as X-Pac can be sometimes, Gregory Helms is breadcrumbs. <laughs> There's just nothing there. He's a great wrestler, don't get me wrong. But, you know, I think maybe you got to look for another personality other than him. Put another chip with him. <laughs> I don't know. Don't let him talk. Yeah, well. That's true, too. We'll put another chick with him. That's the Jeff Hardy syndrome. Now let's throw Trish with him because oh let's put him on a singles push, but not really. But you know, that's maybe we can save that for another well, segment. What, what did you say about Jeff Hardy's singles push? How somehow it's uh, backwards in a sense that he keeps jobbing out week I after said that? week. Yeah, you're very intelligent when it comes Good to point, huh? uh, See, I say that the most intelligent things off the camera. <laughs> yeah, that's why we need that outtake video. Well, I get paid to act like a fool. Actually, I don't get paid to act like a fool. So you know, <laughs> that's I get foolish. What? Would you call me? <laughs> I'll get out of this segment. Okay. Anybody? Yeah, we're going to go. We're going to come back and talk a little bit more about uh, the only thing there is to talk about, the WCW invasion. We'll be back. Unfortunately, he doesn't want to do it. But uh, My throat sore. Just the numerous responses we got last week. I believe uh, we ha we're still looking over the essay, still grading for content, grammar, fragments, stuff like that. So. We haven't picked a winner yet. We promise two winners next week and some good essays, hopefully. So, and we will read the live. Well, not live. I would say that. <laughs> we will read the winning essay on air next week. So, Brian, tell these people who we, <laughs> really, we haven't picked a winner yet, but these people for next week, the two winners, tell them what they will receive. Well, some of them have written in haiku form. We would have had one this week, but uh, <laughs> for anybody who does win the contest, you win from Original Pizza Works, one large pizza with one topping. An order of chicken wings and a two-liter bottle of beverage of your choice, and you can redeem that at any of their three outlets: Finleyville, Jefferson Hills, or that's right, Dravosburg. Minutes from your house. Mm, shut up, Jimmy. <laughs> <laughs> it's actually an hour. No. Yeah, send me a mail bomb. So well, I don't know the address. Question this week. Until you give it to them. <laughs> Was I just bickering, talk? bickering. Name the first four members of the NWO. It's kind of an easy one. I'll give it to you again because I'm sure some of you are writing it down. Name the four, first four members of the NWO. You know the you know the drill. I'm not even gonna bother saying. Let's that. see. There's Ivory. Yeah. <laughs> Road Dog. Vic Bockwinkel. Bill Watts. So anyway, uh, answer the three. Is well, I know you don't want to give the drill, so I'm gonna try my hand at it. Three <laughs> questions on the website. Answer those. Answer this week's question. Four members of the NWO. The first four. Tell us at ProWrestlingReview.com. And for all you out there who sent an essay in, wait next week. We may just read yours, and we'll see you next week. now to change my fax number to the new one so I can get these memos. Thank you, Sergeant. Yeah, put the pen down, quit writing songs, and get on Brian's request. That's right. But anyway, obviously the biggest story of the week is, well, not the Buff Bagwell firing, but the ECW slash WCW merger against the WWF. And last segment we were talking about the wild cards obviously involved with, you have Stephanie McMahon with the possibility of Hunter coming back when he's healthy, The Rock, Rikishi, guys like that. And, uh, that was nicely concluded, so let's talk about something else. Well, we got the pay-per-view coming up. We have the Invasion pay-per-view. Huh? <laughs> yeah. In it's the day of the Poison concert, I might add, so uh, oh my some God. of this panel might not be watching the pay-per-view, so <laughs> just bear with us. Isn't Enough's Enough opening? Yeah. What the Enough's hell? Enough, Quiet Riot, Warrant, and Poison. Oh, my God. Obviously, the headliners being Poison. I actually had a friend who went to the concert. Sure, we were in Pittsburgh. Sure. I had a friend who went to that. I guess it was just Quiet wa or Warrant po and Poison and some other hair band from the 80s. But he was all psyched about it. He got tickets and I hang around somebody with people. Somebody has something to say. <laughs> it wasn't me. I didn't go. Anyway, <laughs> we've got the Invasion pay-per-view coming up right after the Poison concert. And uh, there's a few matches that we do know of right now. Well, well we think we know of. X-Pac is going to be facing Billy Kidman. I guess no titles on the line. I have assumed no titles on the line. Uh, well, we were supposed to have Mike Awesome against uh, Reiner for the hardcore title, but I assume that's scrapped now. Since yeah, they're, they're on the same team now, so... <laughs> This is what I mean. I really think this story is booked in a week. Could this be the, well, let's throw what? this question out. I, am I jumping the gun here, <coughs> Bob Ryder? Or uh, could this be the death of the hardcore title? <gasps> that maybe, you know. I didn't know it was alive to begin with. Well, so. I mean. Uh, unless the ECW ideals and faction, like, maybe they come out and say, well, this is what hardcore extreme is all about. And I don't know. 
it's not a bad point, but I mean, I, I think the match would just be changed. I don't, I don't think it's a big deal. I don't think people were frothing at the mouth to buy this pay-per-view for that hardcore title yeah, match. Yeah, test as his opening. Well, I either way, I mean, I don't, I don't think it would be a big deal if they change it. But Jim, that's not a bad point, though, that they could say, you know, we're going to show you what extremes about. Yeah. We don't mind beating up our, you know, teammates, so to speak. Well, even that, I mean, you can have a few with a WWF guy there just have Rhino or Mike Austin say, like I said, this is what extreme is all about. And you throw, God help me, test involved. And, uh, you know, just have him beat You love him, you love him, you love him. He's the man. Well, let's not forget the main event. It's the inaugural brawl, which I assume implies that they're going to have it every year now. By the way, that is a really sissified name for that match. Yes, I just want to point that out. Uh, well, anyway, it looks like as of right now, at the time of this taping, it's going to be the WWF team consisting of Steve Austin, Kurt Angle, Undertaker, Chris Jericho, and Kane going up against the WCW team of, well, WCW, ECW team of Dallas Page, Booker T, uh, the Dudley Boys. Boys, and either Rob Van Dam or Rhino if it's still uh, being discussed. And, you know, I know the building may fall when I say this, but I think it probably should be Van Dam. If, if they don't use Taz, which I, I believe, Tom, you brought that up, Taz it's just getting into that match. Obviously, Van Dam has a cult following. I mean... It's been debated whether he can wrestle or not. He's like a John Carpenter movie. Everybody Certainly loves like it. Cult Most people hate it. But the thing is, Taz already has a personality, is well established. So you'd be stupid not to put Taz in. But then again, you'd be stupid not to put Van Dam in. Van Dam's new. He just debuted this last this past Monday. I think you know. I think Taz is the obvious choice, only because you know a few weeks ago he was feuding with. Uh, well, I don't want to say feuding with Steve Austin, but it looked like WWF was uh, inching towards a program between the two. Yeah. Obviously, that's been scrapped now. But again, you could put Taz in that match, the inaugural brawl. Have Taz be in it, have Taz go up against Steve Austin. You can yeah. still do the same thing. And you, know? you still have that clip ready that you can keep showing from SmackDown because it's right. probably better it didn't go any further. Yeah, I mean, so I, I think Taz is more a logical choice considering he's getting a little more airtime as a wrestler. And I don't think in this situation you need Rob Van Dam. Uh, we talked previously when we thought Van Dam was going to WCW, some of his appeal. Taz has the same call following, and I think he'd just be a better performance at he, this point. Well, here's the thing, though if you do put Van Dam in the match, it's a 10 man tag, right? Yes. What better way to showcase your high spots, which is Van Damme is what he's known for and supposedly all he's good point. at. Put him in the 10-man tag. He's not going to have any rest holds. He doesn't even have to sell. Just throw a couple kicks, do a Van Daminator, fall out of the ring, and he's done. That's a good point, actually. <laughs> uh, Wham! One for the good guy. There you go. Well, one other thing uh, that, well, at least from this whole WCW thing, is the, I guess, heel turn of Shane McMahon against The Undertaker. Because I know a lot of the uh, internet folks were calling the turn inexplicable. But I don't think it was all that inexplicable. I mean, WCW wasn't getting the proper response they were hoping for, which is sort of the babyface response. People were booing them, so why not just turn the whole group heel, which oh. they did with Booker T it later in the night. It goes back again, and we mentioned earlier in the show about the Vince Russo, Eric Bischoff thing. They came back to lead the New Blood, and technically, from what I took from that angle, was the New Blood were supposed to get cheered against the you know the Millionaires Club, the guys who have been dominating wrestling with their egos and their money and all that kind of stuff. It didn't work out that way. The crowd went ahead and cheered, but for guys like Hogan and Luger and you know, whoever else, so you had to make a change. I think it's just yeah. something that had to be done. And, you know, for all those internet writers out there who, you know, are, can't even spell the word inexplicable, you know, tough. Yeah. <laughs> that's, I, the way, that's the way it had to have been. I, I agree with you to a point, but I think in some sense it was rushed. I think maybe they put too much stock into the Washington Raw two weeks ago. See, I don't think they did. I think that's, a per that's the perfect test audience, you know. It's not WWF territory. It's not WCW territory. Uh, it's Pacific Northwest territory. Um, but, you know, that I think if the Washington crowd's going to react the way they did, I think that's going to be a pretty good litmus test of how the rest of the country may react to this. And especially if you take WCW to Atlanta, Georgia, and they're booing WCW guys. I, I, I do think that they made the right decision. And, yeah, it was a quick decision, and you know, it may seem rash on some people's part, but clearly it wasn't, it wasn't working the way they were hoping it was going to. And I think it was the only move they could well, make. Now the other direction got to go is the guys like Vince McMahon and Steve Austin. You have to turn them around, too, and it'll be interesting to see how they do that. Well, as we wrap up this segment here, here's a question to ponder for all the fans out there as we go to break, and you, maybe you'll see our answer when we come back in black and white. With WCW having its own referees, title belts, story, well, not storylines, but just title belts, stuff like that, will we see ECW referees, ECW title belts? Oh, man. Speaking of defunct titles, I, I wanted to bring that up when we brought the hardcore title up, but I didn't get a chance to, so here it is. Will the ECW world title be seen again on television? I God, so. I hope so. You do? I hope I'm not. I'm being facetious. Oh, I think the bank repossessed it. <laughs> well, there's all those replicas you can buy out there now for a couple dimes on the dollar. So. It's not bad. So think about it, fans, and we will return for segment something. We'll be back.
Just start without us. Just go ahead and start without this us. This is really insulting, by the way. Oh, we. Oh, wait, wait, you wait, said. Nah, you're right. I don't care a bit. Oh, we've done a lot worse than that. But anyway, during the this past Saturday's XPW show, apparently the wrestler Supreme, as I wrote on the website, and I'm sure all of you have read it because you're big fans of me and the show, fell face first through a flaming table and was badly burned in critical condition, I believe, as of this report, as of this show. Just another incident of XPW pushing the envelope too far. One of those cases where if it didn't happen this past Saturday, it would have happened in the future. And God knows what the if it did happen in the future, say the guy would have torn his eye out with barbed wire. Who knows what? It's just the case of XPW going too far. Well, you brought up the point, too, during the break that um, after he caught on fire, he was actually running around on fire. And they come out and put the table out first and then let him... You know, sit there, and it well, not so much sit there, but well, you know what I mean, though. I mean, panic. Obviously, he's you know more important than a table that's in the ring. I don't know. That table does cost about thirty bucks up at Staples. So but it, yeah. you know, like you said, it's XPW, it's garbage, and you know anybody that's watched it knows that. So I, you know, yeah, and no, we get actually get a, we do get emails from people sometimes saying, well, why don't you take it more seriously, you know, and, and and don't just review tapes. That's not what we're doing. You know, anybody can can figure out that there's not a whole lot of creative thinking going on here. <laughs> and you know, it doesn't take a whole lot of, uh, of talent and ability to go set a whole big ring full of staples and you know, sharks and things like that and power bomb. <laughs> <laughs> All right, no, sharks. Sharks. And power bomb people. I mean, you know, that's stupid stuff. I mean, it, it's not that impressive. And you know, I don't know. Well, it, it's not well, even. You, you, say, you say there's not a whole lot of creative thinking. There, there isn't a whole hell of a lot of skill involved either. I watched XPW when it was on this area. These guys are bad. I mean, these guys are, I, I don't know, I assume most of them are in their 20s. They're backyarders, yeah. plain and simple. Well, this story does have a happy ending, though. After uh, he was rushed to the hospital supreme, the show did continue. So the fans got their money's worth, even though a guy nearly died in the ring. So for all you XPW fans out there, thank God XPW, the show continued. XPW. Yeah, and I know it, it doesn't have the same ring as uh, ECW. No. What does really? And I know the XPW fans are going to hate to hear this, but here's a really easy indication to figure out whether or not these guys are talented or not. The WWF's not knocking on these guys' doors, and that is the truth. I mean, that is how you know that whether or not somebody is decent enough to have, uh, you know, the type of exposure X XPW I guess believes they think they deserve or whatever. Nobody's looking for these guys. The only guys who want to hire XPW wrestlers are XPW. It's because there is no talent there, and there's really I don't know. There's not there, there's not really a whole lot there that's worth anything. Well, the thing is, when ECW was in at its peak, and they you know they would bring guys in like Rey Mysterio Jr., Ruben Two, right. Dean Malenko, guys like that, yeah, who now. have great matches, and you know, people would actually go to ECW and raid their talent right. because that's what it was, talent. Right. And like you said, you know, XPW, it doesn't take much for you know to light one of your friends on fire or you right. know, powerbomb through halogen light bulbs. That's not talent. Talent is being able to work a match. Tell a story and you know deliver you know quality and XPW is not that. Yeah. Well, a lot of people compare XPW to backyard wrestling, which I think is an awful comparison to begin with because at least backyard wrestling, I can give these kids an excuse. They're 13, 15 years old. They think they're going to get noticed. Okay, maybe lo not a lot of maturity we're dealing with here. XPW has, I'm not even going to say has the talent. They have the quote unquote big names: Vampiro, Sandman, big names of the past. They have TV clearances. And they're doing crap like this. It's truly a shame. This stuff should be happening in the backyard where it shouldn't even be happening at. But unfortunately, you can see it on TV. When a company tries to challenge ECW like they did, and they take guys like Big Dick Dudley, Sabu, and give me John Cronus, ECW cast-offs. Number one, how, how do you succeed using that formula? You know, Not I mean, just ECW cast-offs either. You're the pro wrestling cast -offs. Well, that's true. And it's just, you, you watch the product, it's bad production, bad, every, these guys just aren't talented. They're not talented. Well, how do you make up for lack of talent? Light tables on fire. Go get trained. Some of these guys aren't even that good. Well, yeah, that's you're, you're ruining my point, though, Jim. Oh, yeah. <laughs> if you, you make up for a lack of talent, you get a big bowl full of piranhas and you dunk your head in there during <laughs> a match. You do stuff like that to compensate. I haven't seen a good electric eel match in a while. Really? Yeah. The one memory I have of XPW, I watched one match, or well actually it was one tape, I, def I went through most of the matches, it yeah. was a John Cronus match, and <laughs> they tried this awful table spot, and he set him on the table, uh, the table broke through, so they kept doing it again, it was like 15 minutes later, finally John Cronus is ready to, you know, dive off of the, you know, the top rope onto the table, Cronus just slips, and it, it just, it's well, horrible. How about the one spot, we, we previewed that one tape on here one time, Cronus was the on no the table, cell. 
Yeah, the guy does a front flip leg drop. Probably the, the best move he's ever done in his life. Cronus just pops up. The guy isn't even done landing on Cronus. Cronus pops up. Well, it goes back again. XPW is not about telling stories during matches. Yeah, it's not about suck. anything. It's just about getting your moves in and hoping you don't kill somebody. Well, I don't and unfortunately, I don't, know, yeah. I don't, I don't know who Rob Black has a vendetta against, but that's the only explanation I have for this. And you know what? The thing too is XPW is not established. We've we've you know established that, <laughs> but. <laughs> The, the thing is, XPW, what they're doing, eventually people are going to pick up on this. And I don't mean people like Backyards and people like mainstream media. And they're automatically going to attach this to the WWF. And it has no, they have no reason to do that because the WWF doesn't endorse it. The WWF tries, from my opinion, the best they can to tell people not to do what they do unless you're trained. So XPW is going to hurt wrestling's perception no matter what. Just one final thought on XPW. I did watch the syndicated show, I think, maybe once or twice. And there was a skit with, uh, I believe, White Trash Johnny or Jimmy Homeless. I believe it's the same person with a different name. I think he was buying groceries at a food, uh, food store, whatever the hell you call it, supermarket. <laughs> and he was making copies of something. That skit lasted 25 to 30 minutes. And I realize for all you people out there that are real anal, it was only 23 and a half minutes. But you get the point. How the hell can you watch something like that? It's like watching the movie Unbreakable. Hey now. <laughs> I still gotta hear the end the of The finish was good. Yeah, Jim never got clued into how the damn movie Somebody ended. tell me. I'll tell you on the way home. But anyway, XPW is bad. That's our they main suck. message. suck. No. We're gonna come back. We're gonna talk about. Well, actually, no, we're gonna do our rants. That's it. And then, uh, then you guys will all go home. See ya. Our rant segment. In an untimely fashion, or unfavorable fashion, <laughs> or something, uh, other, another word that starts with un, I'm going to start the rant this week, <laughs> which I've never done before, so here I go. As great as the ECW angle was this past Monday, in my opinion, I thought it was great. Sorry, Jim. I, if there was one bad thing to come out of it, the WWF does have a loss at commentators, too, actually. Paul Heyman and Taz, because, well, <laughs> obviously they're both in ECW now. So in picking two new color guys rather than just throw Jonathan Coachman in there who has naked pictures of Vince McMahon with someone else I'm convinced of for the only reason he has a job, be a little more selective. We were talking during break that uh, I believe Brian brought it up that they were going to consider at least Dean Malenko and Al Snow to fill at least one of those guys in for the color. Not a bad idea. Here's a pop question. Who makes the best commentators either in football, baseball, hockey, basketball, what, uh, what have you? Former players. Dean Malenko's a wrestler, was a wrestler, I don't know if he still wrestles. Al Snow, former wrestler, still wrestles. They actually know what they're talking about, unlike Jonathan Coachman, who just wants a trophy for his efforts and doesn't even want to be there. He just wants to rub McFoley's belly during those access shows. So my plea to the WWF, as I've done many times in the past, please be a little selective. Malenko, Snow, good choices. Don't throw a Kevin Kelly in there because he just wants to gain weight. And don't throw a Jonathan Coachman in there who doesn't want to be in there at all. And Michael Cole sucks. Okay. <laughs> you, you stole that Michael Cole sucks thing from me. You can't stop talking about Steve Blackman. Oh, boy. Man, he's hurt. But uh, anyway, I want to kind of touch on the same thing that Tom did, only you know a different part of the broadcasting team. Uh, Jim Ross this past week, again with the ECW angle, as good as it came off, I really don't think that anybody else besides Jim Ross could have carried that angle the way he does, or the way he did. Um, there was a talk of, you know, why wasn't Scott Hudson out there doing WCW matches? Our Booker T faced Kurt Angle. Why wasn't Scott Hudson or Arn Anderson out there? You know, I really think that you get a sense of, when you watch Scott Hudson and you watch Jim Ross, you really get a sense of how much ahead of the game, I guess you could say, Jim Ross is compared to other commentators. You know, I would dread to think if this ECW thing would have happened, say, on SmackDown, having to listen to Michael Cole squeak his way through this angle and literally squeak with the way his voice works, uh, it just would have been horrible. I, Ross knows what to sell, and it, it, touching on the point that Tom said, you know, former wrestlers know what to say, and Jim Ross, of course, knows what to say when it comes to, you know, promoting an angle. But And the other thing I wanted to talk about is um, we talked a little bit about Buff Bagwell, and you know, I, I kind of feel sorry now for Buff Bagwell's uh, latest tag team partner when they were in WCW, and that's Lex Luger. Uh, someone brought up to me the fact that maybe Lex Luger wasn't the troublemaker that everybody thought he was, and maybe Buff Bagwell was the one that influenced him. Does that mean that WWF should go out and hire Lex Luger? Well, no, because he still sucks, but at least his attitude might not have been as bad as people thought. Well, speaking of people with attitudes, maybe not as bad as people thought, or maybe they are. Um, with the whole WCW, ECW uh, group coming together, I still think the WWF needs to try to go out and maybe get one or two of the big name WCW guys they haven't been able to reach any type of agreement with yet. That meaning Scott Steiner, Ric Flair, Goldberg, one of those types of guys. And you know, I know there's a lot of discussion about Goldberg, and you know, he's going to make a lot more money than a lot of the other guys on the roster and things like that. But I think right now, 
You need a really big guy with them. If you brought in a Goldberg to put in that WCW unit, that wouldn't be like a Triple H or a Rock, somebody that was just like a WWF guy they were able to stick over there. I think that would just do wonders for this whole story. And I think it would do a lot for what they were going to end up doing with, w with WCW as a product in and of itself. You know, there may be issues where, you know, you have to say to guys and sit down and say, look, yes, we're paying Goldberg more than some of you other guys, but everybody benefits in the long run. And I think once you do that, that, uh, you know, once you get people understanding that it's good for everybody, then it'll work out. And on that note, uh, it, as you mentioned, Buff Bagel before and some of the problems discipline-wise discipline I had with him, and there were some rumors, although I guess they turned out to be unfounded, about uh, Stacey Keebler. Um, I think you're going to see a very interesting situation with the WCW guys over the next couple of months as they adapt to a WWF style. Uh, you know, th it's not any secret at it, what it, that. It's no secret at all that the WCW locker room and their way of doing business wasn't so businesslike. And uh, it's going to be interesting to see if some of these guys like Bagwell, who maybe had a little easier in WCW, are going to have a hard time adjusting to a more strict style in WWF. I guess we'll have to wait and see. Well, and speaking of attitudes, hi. You remember me? That's up right. I'm Johnny Lawler. I'm Johnny Lawler, and I'm a dumbass. <laughs> you know, I missed the show two weeks ago. I missed getting my shots in on China, Joni, whatever. Quits the WWF, can't reach an agreement. D did we learn nothing from Stable? I mean, th does this man-made person think that she's going to not become a big star? The fact that, I just don't get it. I mean, there's nowhere else to go for her. Yeah, it's, you can debate m monopolies and whatever, but the fact is the WWF made her a star when nobody else wanted her. And there's nobody else out there that's going to want her now. She's not going to go to the independent scene. She sure as hell ain't going to Japan. And if, if she thinks Hollywood is going to come calling for her after the, it, it's just not going to happen. You know, uh, China at one point said uh, something to the effect of she would do a great disservice if she stayed in the WWF. And just looking on her back th the last year and her performance, uh, truer words have never been spoken. I can't speak for everybody. China, goodbye. When you realize you're nothing without the WWF, don't call, don't call us trying to get a spot on the show. Don't call Vince McMahon because your career is now over. And I did, I did this a couple weeks ago. I'm going to do it again. See you, China. You said last time you didn't light half the room on fire, didn't you? Well, you know, we have the inch of water. It'll be put out. And just remember, Russian babes never say me yet. <laughs> right. Ready? I gotta, sorry, that got to me. I'm going yeah. to wait to my room. Want a tissue or anything? What's that? You want a tissue or anything? Uh, it wasn't yeah. that good. Yeah. But, uh, if you want to read my column, you can pick it up on newsstands tomorrow, or you can read it on the web. It's www.triblive.com slash sports. And my column, hell, it's called Sharpshooter. You can read it in the Daily News. It's on newsstands everywhere right as we speak. Or you can check it out on the internet at www.dailynewsmckeesport.com. Check out the uh, left side of the screen for columnists. Click on that. And you'll find me. Reach us on the internet at www.prowrestlingreview.com. Mail us at prowrestlingreview at lycos.com. Enter the trivia, and the question again this week is, name the four, first four members of the NWO. Once again, the website, prowrestlingreview.com. It's really a good read if you want to, except for the really anal people. Ah, this is not a personal vendetta. So just check out the website. Check out the show next week. And as our producer, Mr. Dickinson, said at the beginning of the show, there will be a new season of Pro Wrestling Review coming up in the next couple weeks, mm -hmm. so stay tuned for that. Watch the show, get all the information. No BMWs to give away, but just watch for the new season. And for myself, for Rennie, for Brian, and for Jim, this is the old Pro Wrestling Review signing off, and we'll see you next week. Bye. <laughs>